Okay, I think we're up and going. Uh, thank you everyone for joining us this evening. I'm Beth DeFalco, Deputy Commissioner for Public Affairs and Communications at New York City <coughs> Department of Environmental Protection. But today I'm serving as a hearing officer for this public hearing of the New York City Water Board on proposed water rates to take effect beginning July 1st. After several years of virtual hearings, we're pleased to be returning to in-person meetings this year in each of the five boroughs. I'd like to thank the College of St. Francis for making this venue available to us, and I'd ask that everybody turn their phones to silent now as we're recording. Uh, as I mentioned, this meeting is being recorded, and an audio recording and transcript of the meeting will be made available on the board's website at nyc.gov backslash waterboard. We've also placed several documents in the official record, including a notice appointing me as the hearing officer, verified copies of the public notices placed in newspapers, a draft of the rate schedule listing and rates and billing policies for the coming year, a public information booklet describing the proposed rates, and copies of the written testimony received by the board so far. The draft rate schedule and public information booklet are also available on the board's website, as is a copy of the presentation you'll be hearing today. The program for today includes two sections. First, senior representatives from DEP will present the proposed water rates for the fiscal year beginning July 1st, and then members of the public will have the opportunity to make a statement. The purpose of this hearing is to allow the public to present their viewpoints and opinions on the new rates being proposed. We're here to listen, to take note, and to compile a record of the testimony. This is not intended to be a debate, and we won't be able to respond directly to questions or engage in an open discussion here. So I've got a list of public speakers who are not quite registered yet today. Um, if you haven't registered, but you'd still like to speak, you have an opportunity to do so, just see any of the DEP staff here in the room. Um, and if you'd like to provide testimony but prefer not to speak at the microphone, you can provide us with written testimony either today or any time up until June 5th. You can do that by handing a copy of the written testimony to one of the board officers here or by emailing nycwaterboard at dep.nyc.gov. Or you can mail it to 5917 Junction Boulevard, 8th floor, Flushing, New York, 11373. We have members of the Water Board with us today, including um, Member Arlene Shaw and Chairman Alan Carney. Thank you. <laughs> um, we are also joined by DEP's Commissioner Rohit Argawal, uh, who also serves as the city's Chief Climate Officer, and DEP's Chief Financial Officer, Joe Muren, as well as Water Board Treasurer, Omar Nazem. Okay, thank you. Now, um, we will, actually, before we begin, uh, Chairman, would you like to make some remarks? Or very remarks? briefly, very brief remarks. Thank you, Madam Hearing Officer. Uh, I'm Al Carney, and uh, Chairman of the uh, of the Water Board. Uh, first of all, this is a beautiful venue. I mean, it's just very pretty, and and walking in here is just it's very dramatic. I enjoy it very much. Uh, we're here tonight to listen. We came to hear what ratepayers in Brooklyn have on their minds, uh, whether or not you agree with the proposal, whether or not you disagree with it, and if so, why? In either case. Um, let me assure the members of the public who may be here that the board has not met to make any decision about the DEP proposal. Uh, it's clear, we've, we've seen it several times, and you're going to see it again tonight. Uh, it, 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 uh, it is, it is well-reasoned, but it may not be the right answer. And we will assume for the moment that the board has not made a decision about that, because the board has not. Uh, please know that we're here to listen to what folk have to say. If you have to say something, please say it. Uh, or if you have comments you don't choose to uh, voice, then, then please send them to us. June 5th was the date? Yes. Okay. Um, <coughs> Commissioner, thank you for being here. The Commissioner is actually going to, uh, to take us through the presentation. Thank you for uh, your time and your effort. Uh, with that, I give you back the microphone. Or do I give I it will I'll let you pass it over to the Commissioner. Yeah, you are, sir. Presentation. All right. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, Today I'd like to walk through a couple of items uh, along with uh, Chief Financial Officer Joe Murren. Um, we will cover uh, some basics about uh, the way New York City's water system is funded and financed, uh, work that we at DEP and the Adams Administration have done over the last year to keep rate hikes low by finding funds. Uh, I'll ask the Chief Financial Officer to present the rate proposal and our customer program reauthorization. Uh, and then he'll just uh, summarize the final steps in our public hearing process. So, 
New Yorkers should know, of course, um, and although few of us do fully, uh, that New York City's water system is paid for completely by the water bills that New York ratepayers pay. And that includes uh, paying the salaries of the majority of the 5,500 employees who work both within the city and upstate to provide our clean water and, and treat our uh, sewage, um, working 24-7, uh, 365. Um, and it funds our network that includes 15,000 miles of water and sewer mains, 19 reservoirs, 12,000 rain gardens, 14 wastewater treatment plants, and 96 pump stations. And by and large, our capital investments go into three buckets. One, to keep the water running, keeping our, our reservoirs and our delivery system functioning so that New Yorkers can reliably drink clean and safe water, protecting the harbor, and we are so proud at TEP about the fact that New York's harbor is cleaner than it has been in 150 years, which is why we can celebrate seeing whales and dolphins and seahorses in the harbor and, and even up the, up the Bronx River as we did at one point this year. Um, and to dealing with climate change. And this is an increasing focus for us uh, as an agency, um, particularly within the city, to deal with uh, extreme rainfall that we are facing, that the city saw um, so devastatingly during Hurricane Ida two years ago, um, but also thinking about how rising sea levels might affect our infrastructure and how the increased risk of drought might affect our reservoir system and water quality. And in fact, more than half of the water bills that New Yorkers pay go to capital investment, either in the form of direct funding of capital projects or uh, mo the vast majority to paying the debt that pays down the investments that we have made and will be making this year in our, um, our water infrastructure. And you see on the right hand side that DEP over the next 10 years has a budget to invest $31 billion in its uh, capital uh, program. The majority of that is in the in-city system of water mains, the water distribution number you see here, and the sewers that, that run through our streets. Uh, another huge component is in water pollution control, investments largely in our wastewater treatment plants to keep them uh, towards the state of good repair, and then an additional $3 billion in water supply. Uh, I'll focus on a couple of projects that uh, DEP has done here in Brooklyn um, over the last year and, and uh, a little bit going forward. We've had some significant upgrades in the Garrison Beach neighborhood, uh, a $30 million project roughly that was completed early this year that we're very proud of is below budget and nine months ahead of schedule. Um, and our design work was, was done in-house, included 13,000 feet of water mains, 1,500 feet of sewers and an additional 1,000 feet of stormwater in um, We took a major step forward this year uh, with a big announcement, including uh, Mayor Adams and the EPA Regional Director of the Regional Administrator, Lisa Garcia, um, <clears throat> at the Gowanus Canal, where we uh, undertook the groundbreaking of the first of two, and, and in fact, both of them are under construction now, two groundbreaking uh, storage tanks that will, in one case, hold 8 million gallons of combined sewer overflow and keep that uh, sewage from entering the Gowanus Canal once it is cleaned up um, and store it for uh, after storms have passed so it can be treated. This is a total investment of $1.6 billion over the last several years and over the next several years uh, in that part of Brooklyn. Um, and it will not only manage uh, stormwater, but it will, as I say, make a significant improvement to the quality of water in the Gowanus Canal Elsewhere in the system, but relevant to everybody who lives in, in Brooklyn and across the whole city, uh, we have a couple of projects um, affecting the whole system. One will reach a milestone, a particular milestone this coming uh, fiscal year, which is the completion of the more than decade-long project to create a bypass for the leaking section of the Delaware Aqueduct, which conveys 50% of the city's daily average drinking water. This has been a 10-year-long project to replace a leak or to deal with a leak that's been uh, taking place for probably 20 years. Um, altogether, roughly a billion-dollar project. We have another $100 million or so to spend to get it to completion. And the major uh, item is that in October of this year, we will be shutting off the Delaware Aqueduct 
do about six months worth of work, we felt only six months, um, to connect the bypass to the rest of the aqueducts and put the bypass into service. This is the largest repair project in New York City's history. Um, and we're particularly proud of the fact that DEP designed this project in-house, which both saved money and ensured uh, the high quality that we expect. Because all of our water bill, all of our funding comes from the water rate, uh, we have taken significant uh, steps over the last year to do everything possible to ensure that our water rates are at manageable um, and to prevent particularly the high rate of inflation from directly affecting New Yorkers. Um, we, in conjunction with the Water Board, which had to approve some of these programs, uh, we've taken a particular focus on reducing DEP's accounts receivable, like many customer-facing entities around the country and around the world during the pandemic. DEP saw a significant increase in unpaid bills. Um, and so one thing we did with the Water Board's uh, uh, approval um, back in December is that in January we started an amnesty program encouraging New Yorkers who had unpaid water bills and offering them uh, partial or total forgiveness of accrued interest if they paid up. I'm pleased to say that that program, which does expire today, um, I think the customer service center is closed at this hour, so I think it is done. Officially done. It is officially <laughs> over. Um, has collected roughly $90 million from people who had previous balances, um, and we have dispersed nearly $20 million in interest forgiveness to people who have done the right thing. Um, as part of that, we've also been working very hard to uh, make low-income New Yorkers uh, aware of a federally funded state-administered program called the Low-Income Household Water Assistance Program. Uh, unfortunately, the way the state manages this program, individual households have to apply, but we've used what we know uh, about our customers and, and with the help of other city agencies to alert New Yorkers who we think qualify for this program and get the materials they need to apply for it. That has resulted in $24 million in federal money coming to DEP uh, that both relieves debt and takes pressure off of those low-income New Yorker households it also means that's $24 million we do not have to get from the other ratepayers. And in order to sweeten the deal and, and further encourage people to participate, the Water Board approved what we call YWAP Plus, which for a small number of people whose debt was higher than the, large amount, than the, uh, than the maximum amount of federal money they could get, it, once they got the federal money, we've forgiven their, their remainder of their water debt, um, which gets them into, into the black with us and um, further encourages them to go get this federal money, which is just um, new money for New York City. Um, we've also focused on ensuring that affordable housing, particularly affordable multifamily housing, had a new program where we could work with uh, housing um, complexes and, and buildings that had fallen behind in their water bills, and, and we've delivered $2.2 <coughs> million dollars worth of savings two buildings that are entering into payment programs and therefore getting into, uh, into the black with us, which is good. Um, and we have now started at the beginning of May uh, to uh, alert people to the fact that they are uh, at risk of having their water shut off if they do not pay their bills. Um, we did our first several water shut off notices in the first week of May and pleased to say that thus far uh, everybody has actually paid up or found another way to uh, come into compliance, uh, and that has resulted already this month in more than a million dollars being paid up by people who uh, had chosen not to pay their bills. Um, and here's just some data showing the fact that as a result of this, uh, since we started the amnesty program, our accounts receivable have now been declining in a way that we think will be uh, steady. Um, <clears throat> we've also been working very hard to take full advantage of federal and state funding that is now available between the Bipartisan Infrastructure Law, the Inflation Reduction Act, and the New York State Environmental Bond Act approved by the state's voters last November. There are billions and billions of dollars that DEP is or should be eligible for, and we are working very hard to get as much of that as possible because, once again, every dollar that we get from another source means it's a dollar we do not have to ask the ratepayers for. 
And that's one reason that we are particularly uh, concerned about some rules that New York State has put into place when it has uh, the role of distributing money from particularly the bipartisan infrastructure law, where um, several hundred millions of dollars uh, we will be ineligible for under their current rules because of what they call the hardship policy, which defines any city over 300,000 residents as not having any disadvantaged communities. So even poor neighborhoods within New York City, we cannot apply for this money on their behalf because they happen to be in a large city. Um, and there is only one city in all of New York State that is made ineligible for this money by this rule. And it is not a law, it is not a congressional mandate, it is an executive decision at the discretion of the New York State Department of Health and the Environmental Facilities Corporation. They could eliminate this tomorrow. Um, in any case, all together, we are working very hard to get as much money as possible from other sources, from people who are in arrears, from the federal government, from the state government, because every dollar we can get from those sources means it's a dollar we do not ask the ratepayers for. And now I will ask the Chief Financial Officer to take us through the rate proposal. Thank you, Commissioner. Um, good afternoon, or good evening, everyone. Uh, so DEP's billing, as Commissioner laid out, DEP's billing and alternative collection strategies and its careful management of operations and the capital program have enabled us to propose a moderate rate increase at this time, um, when elevated costs remain, you know, have been throughout the economy at this level also. Uh, right now, for fiscal year 23, which is just ending on June 30th, we're projected to have $4 billion in expense. As the commissioner noted, $2 billion of that, or slightly more than $2 billion, is related to debt service and, pay, you know, uh, cash finance capital. That's projected to go up to $2.2 billion for fiscal year 24, primarily due to the growing capital program, as well as you know, ex anticipated higher interest rates on the debt service costs. DEP's operations and maintenance expense are approximately $1.8 billion for this year, projected to go almost up to $1.9 billion for fiscal year 24, an increase of slightly over $100 million. A significant element of that is the recently settled, you know, Deputy uh, uh, District Council 37 labor agreement, which, uh, you know, will also be assumed across the board for all the other unions that, the, that are covered by DEP. That's expected to cost us $74 million both in retro costs and costs for this year, as well as going higher in outer years as well. Um, uh, we also are expecting to have uh, $9 million in additional costs related to chemicals, and $5 million in additional costs related to the continued expansion of the billing uh, system that we just rolled out last year. Next, we have the Water Board and the Water Authorities. Operating expenses were basically flat at about $100 million a year. And then we also have the rental payment request by the city, which has not been made at this time. We don't expect that to happen before fiscal year 23. Moving on, DEP is proposing a 4.42 rate increase as noted, driven by the slightly higher borrowing costs, larger capital program, and the need to invest in staff retention and development throughout, uh, through the OM budget. Uh, that is, you know, slightly below inflation, so we're pleased that it, we're able to keep it with the line. And I have to say that I think the, uh, as the commissioner noted, our amnesty program has definitely helped with that. Uh, moving on to the impact of the rate, Residential customers with an average level of water use will see a small increase in their monthly bill. Right now, the average single family pays about 1,041. The projection is up to 1,088 in fiscal year 24, an increase of $3.84 a month. Oh, I'm sorry, yeah. I don't know if that was supposed to control. Um, for the multi-conservation, I'm uh, sorry, for the average multifamily meter charge, that's expected to go from $773 this year to $808, an increase of $2.85 a month. The multifamily conservation program is expected to go from $1,134 per unit to $1,184, an increase of $418. And we're pleased to say that the minimum charge for properties using less than 90 gallons per day, that will remain flat at $463. You know, knowing that that benefits many of our seniors on a you know fixed income. Um, and then we would we also like to draw attention to the fact that 
you know, water rates within New York City continue to be well below the average for the 30, 30, 30 cities that we track to. For fiscal year 2023, our 1,041 compares favorably to the 1,309 for the other 30 large cities, a 20% you know, uh, discount, or I should say lower than those other cities. Going on to uh, the affordability programs, DEP is re recommending a continuation of those programs that the board approved in fiscal year 23 um, to continue into fiscal year 24. That is $30 million in customer programs um, budgeted, which uh, is a 50% increase from what it was prior to fiscal year 23. That's a $10 million going 12, from 10 million to $12 million for multifamily water assistance program. Six million, uh, you know, increased to fourteen million dollars in home water water assistance program, and the four million dollars that we continue to average on the leak forgiveness program, and these mostly benefit, you know, those multifamily residential properties and small family, small, those homeowners that are on, you know, limited income and qualify. That being said, we are, this is the second to last of our public hearings. Tomorrow night we will have uh, Thursday, June 1st at 6 p.m. at Mercy College at 1200 Water Place in the Bronx. And that will be followed by the Water Board meeting on Tuesday, June 6th at the 255 Greenwich Street at 915, where the board will take into consideration all the commentary written and uh, uh, verbal that we received and make you know, a recommendation or a, a vote on the proposed rate increase. With that, I'll hand it back to the hearing officer. Terrific, thank you. Um, since we have started, um, we've been joined by uh, member John Bolton. And I apologize, I didn't ask if you had five more if you wanted to make any remarks or comments. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Um, and with that, I'll just check again to see if we have any registered speakers or anybody else who wanted to speak before. No, okay. Um, well, with that, thanks for our, uh, our, our presenters. Uh, you saw on that last slide that the next hearing is tomorrow night in the Bronx at 6 p.m. And that will be the final of our five hearings for this year. With that, that concludes our hearing today, and the board will consider all of the public testimony and vote on its budgets and rates for next year on June 6th. If adopted by the board, the new rates will go into effect on July 1st. Thank you.